Welcome to Concerning the Spiritual in Art, a podcast exploring spirituality, consciousness, and the creative process. I'm your host, Martin Benson. All right, y'all, welcome back to the podcast. Today, I have Danish artist Rebecca Borum on, and man, we had a beautiful conversation around her work and a lot of the ideas and themes that are woven into it. Um, We started our conversation kind of learning about her origin, how she began painting and how that sort of began while she was at Danish University studying art and technology. Um, We talked a lot about her shift to working analog versus working in digital media and how that sort of brings in a whole new layer of experience and energy into the quality of work she makes. Um, We talked a lot about her creative process, how she works in the studio, her collaborations with another artist, a wood turner, who's making these amazing substrates for her to do these sculptural paintings on. Um, The discussion went to a lot of places around her personal life and some beautiful things happening there. Um, And all in all, it was just a really amazing, organic, just amazing exchange between the, the two of us. Um, both of us work very similarly or have similar ideas woven into our work. And so we're just like kindred spirits. And we just had an amazing dialogue that I think all of you out there are going to really enjoy. Um, so here you go, Rebecca Borum. Hey, y'all, I'm going to cut in here real quick uh, for all my YouTube viewers out there, just to remind you that the podcast also exists on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and any major podcast platform. So if you're enjoying what you're seeing here on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe on one of those platforms as well so you can take the show with you on the go and never really miss an episode. Also, I wanted to let you know that I'm now offering subscriptions on my Instagram page at Martin L. Benson for 99 cents a month. That's less than $12 a year, which that funding will go toward helping produce the show um, so I can continue to evolve the podcast, continue to create great content. So if you support what I'm doing here and are enjoying all this content here on YouTube, consider not only subscribing on the podcast platforms, but also subscribing on Instagram for that 99 cents a month so that I can continue on this path. So thank you all. Now back to the show. Peace. All right, Rebecca, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm doing really well. Thank you. Awesome. It's great to connect with you again. Um, I know we connected a few weeks back just to kind of check in, get on the same page about recording this episode. And I'm just really excited to be here with you now doing it. Um, I've been following your work for many years. I think we've started following each other like, you know, several years back. And I've just always been so sort of impressed by not only like your discipline and work ethic, but like the way in which you evolve your work and just the quality of what you're producing over there in Denmark is just mind blowing and it's super special. And so I hope everyone here today has a really great opportunity to connect with you and learn more. And one thing that was really interesting for me was to briefly hear sort of how this journey all began for you, because it's not really a standard sort of journey you hear for many painters and artists out there. So I thought that would be like a really cool place for us to begin is for you to kind of talk us about how, talk to us about how you began painting and how you got drawn to to doing the kind of work you're ultimately doing currently. Mm. Yeah. So I think like most artists, I have always been interested in drawing and painting and being very creative as also a very small child. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I had to decide my uh, education, I I talked with the um, counselor about it, and uh, she was like, "What? So what interests you?" And I'm like, "I don't know. Art is really it's it's my favorite subject. So I would definitely go for something like that." So um, I went to a couple of open houses at the university. I I, I wasn't like looking into art schools and so because I didn't. I didn't think of myself as an artist um, Mm. or or wanting to become an artist uh, even. So uh, I went to this open house at at a bachelor degree uh, at the university called the Art and Technology, where I could really see this um, this, uh, both theoretical and practical approach to the the education, which I really, really liked. So we actually got to do art projects. So um, the projects we made were mostly installation art and interactive art, very Mm. technology-based, which was really, really interesting to work with. Um, Also some quite uh, big uh, 
projects uh, yeah. we were doing. Were um, you working so, collaborate collaboratively with other students? Yeah. Wow. So this was uh, both a really great advantage and also sometimes frustrations. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were we were four, five, six people together uh, wow. generating creative ideas. Um, mm -hmm. So that could sometimes. I mean, I'm a person. I'm I. I really I'm good at adapting to other yeah. people. Yeah. So that also meant that some of my ideas sometimes uh, went a bit behind. Um, mm. So I really felt this urge at some point doing uh, doing my bachelor to 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 dig more into what are my creativity and what is what is mm. my expression. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, I found a, a studio uh, where I could uh, apply some of the things I was uh, taught in uh, at the the education, but. I went totally analog instead of digital. <laughs> yeah, what caused that? Like, what what sparked that decision? I think uh, so. So in in my study, we were taught in programming and basic electronics and so, and it was it's it was a whole new world for me. Mm. Um, I really liked the programming because this was the first time I could see math actually being applied uh, mm. to something creative. Um, and also, I mean, digging into formulas and I mean, just to see how a square is um, spinning or something like that mm -hmm. based on math. That was really, really um, impressive to me. Cool. Um, yeah, it really opened my eyes to that area as well. And then how did that like build into your an like going analog? Yeah, so that meant from the beginning what I intuitively began to do was doing these very geometric abstract painting very strict and i mean very planned um, mm -hmm. i was i would sketch um the painting before doing it and i mean also using formulas to to create these um so and in that way it began um eventually being more and more organic. <laughs> yeah. You've um, kind of evolved it after through that yeah. process of just learning how to like apply something. Cause with the computers do so much for you when exactly, you plug yeah. them in. So now you have to kind of do the groundwork and the sort yes. of like heavy lifting of drafting. Exactly. And also just getting my fingers in the paint and, and mm -hmm. using the material that I could feel that it was more for me in a way i mean yeah. it was more intuitive for me to work that way because programming can be super frustrating i mean yeah. you can just it's one comma or one letter wrong then no it, it doesn't <laughs> run <laughs> so oh, so here i could kind of more mold or work with the mistakes and so on which it was really good for me I think yeah. personally, <laughs> I think that's an, a really powerful part of making art is like the embracing yeah. of the mistakes and the the ability to integrate them and find solutions yeah. for how they can still work toward yeah. the uh, direction that the the creative endeavor is going toward. Mm. Um, and so that's something that's really special about I think working analog too is like. Because with the computer, you can delete and go back, and it's like yeah. pristine. It's sterile. It's you know, yeah. it's clean, but erasing no matter how well you erase something there's yeah. still going to be a remnant there there's still yeah. going to be a quality there that cannot be taken away and so it's going to feed into the energy or the sort of result of the work in some capacity and I find that yeah. part sometimes to be really interesting when I even look at art or observe mm -hmm. art not only in my own practice do you feel that same way too yeah, definitely. I mean, I think in the beginning I was trying to imitate uh, the whole computer pixels world, mm. but I could see, I mean, I could see the brush strokes, even though, I mean, how thick of a layer I was putting. <laughs> and I kind of, <laughs> I kind of um, liked that even more um, eventually uh, that you can actually see there are some crookedness uh, mm -hmm. and, and some, I mean, human hand before, uh, behind the, the whole process. Um, yes. I think yeah. that's so special because in this hyper digital age, I think yeah. being more analog is kind of a great counterbalance mm. and it gives a different sort of energy to something. And yeah. I love being able to see the hand in the yeah. work, even though it's like super tight and neat the mm. way that you paint ultimately. But when you observe it up close or see detail shots, like I would see yeah. like maybe through the computer, I can still see 
that it was made by a human. And to me, yes. that gives it a warmth. It gives it some other kind of energy that feels very authentic and unique yeah. um, mm. to you as this individual expression that is Rebecca, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really trying to embrace uh, the whole human hand. And, and also, I mean, I'm trying to, to do as, um, less and less uh, drawing and sketching uh, beforehand and just and just do it gradually and yes uh, I feel yeah. so similar to you in that regard yeah. like I kind of feel like for me personally it's been like a pendulum I've gone all yeah. the way in one and then I've gone all the way this way and I'm trying to yeah. find <laughs> that like resting point between mm. the two but one thing I think that is sort of ubiquitous in all your work is the geometry is the sort of pattern and the exploration yeah. of these sort of visualized mathematical principles. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious for you, like, how is math a form of expression? Like, how does that, how do you view that for yourself in terms of the work you make? Mm -hmm. mm. There's definitely something about symmetry that keeps, I mean, paving its way in my works. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I can't, <laughs> There is some harmony and balance in it that I just it feels so revo rewarding to mm -hmm. um, yeah to make that uh, but it's something I'm trying to to um, to apply as well because I know it's a challenge for me mm -hmm. that I mean because I'm always striving for the harmony and and balance in the work but just to bring in a bit uh, of the chaos as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's going to be a part of it as well. Mm -hmm. But I think for me, like, as you know, through seeing my work, <laughs> I'm a kindred spirit with you in terms of mm -hmm. symmetry. Like, yeah, I feel like I love the harmony and the balance as well. Yeah. And I feel like the world we live in, especially in these times, is, has so much chaos already into it. Mm -hmm. I feel like we need just a little bit, we need to counterbalance that with harmony and balance. And I think yeah. maybe some on, on some unconscious level, it's like, a way in which maybe you and I are reconciling the uncontrollable chaos around us mm. by trying to create some form of meaning or order or balance within yeah. what we're putting out into the world to yeah. sort of butt up against what seemingly is out of our control. Yeah, I definitely see also some, I mean, personal um, approach to, to the whole art making process mm. uh, mm. in that way, that this is kind of my breathing place uh where i mean i can bring in the cares as i want but i'm also my i mean I'm, my environment i'm in control of it here yes, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah yeah the chaos has a, the chaos has a purpose it, it mm -hmm. sort of it, it definitely i don't know always what it is it's hard to see sometimes like what exactly the purpose yeah. is but i feel like the role chaos plays is is to create more novelty or opportunity for like a spontaneous new form of expression that mm. might not have been considered or capable of being made beforehand. It's like, it's kind of the wild card, um, yeah. but it has to be kind of used in a, in a thoughtful, intelligent way, or it yeah. can get out of hand yeah. um, in some sense. But I can sort of see that in some of the newer work you're making too, just like the way that you're bringing more organic forms into mm -hmm. the structure like you sort of have like a base structure of the geometry but then you see some fluidity and the movement breaking symmetry at least from a mathematical yeah. perspective breaking it mm -hmm. i think from a visual perspective it still has a symmetrical feeling to it yeah but like if we were to observe it from a pristine mathematical point of view it's not symmetrical right yeah. because of the organic yeah. qualities yes yeah. and i see also this evolution in your work moving on to three-dimensional objects. Yeah. Work, like I'm looking behind you, some of the sculptural yeah. <laughs> pieces that you're yeah. making. What sort of spawned that generation, like to move into creating on those sort of surfaces? Um, yeah, so it was actually something I started to think about very early in the process. Um, um, it didn't take long for me to move uh, from the, the canvas to... Uh, um, square no um, uh, triangles and circles and polygons and stuff like that but it was always flat mm. uh, works I was doing um, so I mean in the beginning especially it was m very much about depth um, concave and uh, convex um, 
um, effects I was okay. uh, I was trying to to create on the the canvas. So I started to think about mm, how can I actually both I mean mm, get the work to <laughs> to underline my my effect or the 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 visual effect I wanted on the viewer. Yeah. So that was where the the process of uh, thinking about how could this actually I mean how could I do this? Yeah, right. So, how could um, you enhance that effect? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So I started uh, 3 years ago I think um to do these uh, plaster casts. Um but the material didn't really I mean it wasn't it wasn't too it wasn't too great to work with plaster cast and so on. And also was it, hard it to has paint on or something. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And also had to talk uh, to some uh, professionals about how can I, how can I seal the surface and stuff like that. And it is a bit of a fragile uh, material. So, uh, so I moved on to, uh, to wood. I thought it would be super expensive uh, to, to do wood uh, um, forms, but uh, I found a guy who is uh, who is a wood turner and uh, creating a lot of different things uh, balls and stuff like that and he was just super keen to work with me and so cool yeah very creative person person as well even though he didn't consider himself as an artist or anything but mm -hmm. but uh, we have a really good collaboration where i just I just open up my ideas and he's really, yes, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> we could also do this. And I'm that's like, so cool. yeah, I love that. Yeah. You're bringing the collaboration back a little bit. Yeah. From I do. How you sort of started collaborating, but now yeah. you're sort of still in control of the vision and the execution, like looking yeah. at the, uh, the sculpture behind you over your mm -hmm. shoulder, when you're, are you, are you sort of mapping out like how you want that form to look or do you give him a basic idea and you let him kind yeah. of make it on his own? How yeah, does that I work? actually for that one, I think I was just like, can you just make a couple of those like <laughs> something like this? Just don't think a uh, um, Christmas tree. That was my yes. only uh, advice <laughs> for him. <laughs> right. So, oh, so yeah, he he made six uh, different uh, pieces in um, in uh, various sizes, and then uh, I was just like, that's really really awesome. Yeah. So he's just kind of randomizing um, the forms um like that so he's taking a bit from one and mixing with some others and some of them have uh, fear in them as well mm -hmm. wow so my, i think that's yeah. so cool yeah, it's a special really, collaboration it sounds like definitely. between the two of you and what you're able yeah. to do with them is just so special and novel it's sort of a new way of experiencing the canvas um i mean you see yes. a lot of artists or art history who have played with the sort of rectangular format and changed mm -hmm. it but um i think what you're doing is so interesting in relation to the imagery you're making there's a real connection between the imagery and the yeah. actual form itself which i think it to me enhances this visual power in it mm -hmm. um i want to circle back to the math and the expression of math because i find yeah. a similar sort of like fascination with mathematical principles i was always a terrible math student Mm -hmm. And I never really understood like why this stuff mattered. Like I understand basic, yeah. you know, arithmetic and doing basic formulas in order to, you know, maybe increase your ability to have better logic or like your intellect grows in some ways through problem solving. I get that. But the actual mm -hmm. application of math was always kind of foreign to me until I, until I really dove deep into geometry and started to uncover and realize and connect with this notion of Geom geometry is sort of like a, a thumbprint of creation that we find mm. everywhere in nature in our yeah. own bodies all around us and so that brought me to sort of sacred geometry and exploring some of those principles of proportion and pattern and how yeah. those are really everywhere we look and there have been sort of almost like forms of cultural expression throughout time I think mm. humanity has always been interested in in math in some ways and I think somehow in our educational process, we've divorced it from the magical yeah. majesty. That yeah, it definitely. Is. And I think what you're doing is reclaiming that because it's such a beautiful way of thinking and communicating about life because it transcends, in my mind, all cultural barriers of language mm. um, because it is a there's a universality there 
um, that I think is undeniable. And so for me, when I look at your work, you've grown up in a totally different context and I have a different culture, you know, um, and so forth, but what you're making just pierces through all those boundaries and connects us to like the innate Mm. humanity and the, and the sort of innate interdependence of our, of our lives in a cosmological sense, I guess you could say. So for me, that's why, like, I think math is such a, yeah, yeah. a powerful tool for us. And it's yeah. so cool that artists are embracing it more and more and utilizing it like yeah. yourself. Yeah. And and I mean, the funny, funny thing is that I, I don't look up theoretical formulas and about these things, but they just tend to, I mean, just come forth yeah. without me knowing. I mean, there's an intuition. That's a mystery. To, to this. There's an intuition to this kind <laughs> yeah. of math, I feel like, because mm-hmm. I think on some deep level, there's a a real understanding of it because that is what has made us come to be in some ways or in some perspectives. It's like, we are made of these principles Mm. and forms when you get down to like the minutia of like how the building blocks of life seem to generate. Yeah. Um, And so it's a part of who we are. So I think this intuitive connection to creating it is so special and and powerful. Mm. Um, I'm curious when you're working, do you notice that like the work that you're creating like changes your state of mind in some ways, like your consciousness in some ways? Have you, is there like a, a quality to like the, your internal landscape that maybe mm. feels transformed or shifted through the years of making this kind of work? That's a really, really good question <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, uh, it's hard to pinpoint those exact moments where they actually really um transform you but Mm -hmm. i mean i definitely believe that because for me this is a very um it's a very powerful practice Mm -hmm. to do these things um that they don't have any purpose uh, when i i'm sitting there making them um uh, so i think definitely some kind of I mean, the the flow state is is definitely transformative. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I, what do you call it? Um, I think a lot of stuff in my life and why we are here. And I mean, all those ex- existential uh, questions, I really get those um digested in a way mm. through the art making um so i think in that way it's definitely the most transformative um wow. so it's getting you to it's like when you're getting in these flow states or you're getting in these deep states of concentration yeah. when yeah. you're in the middle of making you just have these like insights these epiphanies or you these like connections that come up or like these questions that come up that you can con- contemplate like while you're making yeah. it so it's almost like the these these sort of um, not only the forms that you're making, but the way you're going about it is unlocking things in your mind. Mm. That's how I personally feel when I'm working in especially a deep state of concentration. I feel like floods of information seem to move through me at times, not all the time, yeah. but there are times when I just feel like almost like a gate has opened or a portal is open and just insights or ideas or questions or or connections have just all of a sudden revealed Mm. themselves in my consciousness like very clearly Um, yeah and I find those moments to be incredibly healing and transformative or affirming in deep ways or they kind of instill curiosity yeah I think on on a deep level for me it's also like this feeling of purpose in something that is has no purpose in a way i mean (laughs) yeah right you can't eat Uh, those sculptures (laughs) no exactly i mean but it just it it feels somehow so rewarding in in a very meaningful way yeah i don't know Um, i have like this weird imagination or maybe this weird perspective on life but i feel like on some level like what what's happening when you're when you're creating work that quote unquote maybe has no practical purpose to Mm. survival um Mm. in the most like basic ways of like shelter and food and warmth and what have you like you but you're it it's it's 
I don't know, it's bolstering the, the spirit of the species in some ways. Like the point of living is maybe not just about survival, but it's about like connection and experience and like yeah. finding common commonality between yeah. all those aspects that share this experience the animals and the people the whole environment and so when you're working on I feel like on some maybe spiritual plane or quantum level like you're you're affecting this sort of total environment in some small Mm -hmm. amazing way and that has a purpose that maybe is not tangible that you can't see directly but on Mm -hmm. some level it's like I don't know it's supporting this journey of the human spirit in some ways yeah. um i don't know i don't know how to describe it but i feel like there's some kind of alchemical process happening yeah. when people are really deeply committed to their creative work and their heart is really open their mind is open and they're using mm-hmm. it as a way to create more beauty in the world and more connection or more mystery um that there's something powerful there and I don't know what it is. And I'm Mm. fumbling over my words to kind of express it because I think it's beyond what can be expressed, but it's an intuitive knowing. Like, I think that's what you're seemingly trying to to communicate now is there's just this feeling that there's this purpose here. Yeah. There's there's something great happening here that I can't fully understand. And yeah, I guess it's like a feeling of alignment. Yeah. Because at the same time, for me, at least it's, deeply personal what I'm doing I mean I'm really dealing with a lot of stuff and digesting life in general and Mm -hmm. all the those things that happens in life um so in that way I mean from that perspective it's it's so personal I mean it you you, I cannot untie it for myself and this is something I really learned uh definitely uh through the last couple of years in the beginning I was like um I'm I'm just making art for the world and it has nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. But I really, I really saw, wow, this is one to one, uh, something that happens here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dealing with. Yeah, it is. It's like it's almost like your particular method for growing your own consciousness, for yeah. becoming more and more expansive and your understanding of who you are and yeah. what your relationship is in the world. And art is your particular medium for discovering that um there are other and not everyone uses art to discover that there are so many other ways Mm. to discover this these components to our identity that's beyond the surface of what we can see as identity Mm. beyond our name and place and birth and personal story too it's like the bigger story of life that we're connecting to and i feel this way like art seems for me to be a a tool or a method for which I can sort of excavate Mm. all of sort of the blockages and the things that are keeping me from fully understanding who I am um, and embodying that full expression. So when you're working, you're definitely processing a lot of personal trauma, personal history um, and all sorts of, of energies, I think move through you. And I guess in that way, it's, it, the personal also become the becomes the universal Mm -hmm. because i mean all those feelings that i'm experiencing i guess a lot of people are experiencing those as well um and i guess that's that must be my channel in a way Mm -hmm. um to other people why they they find it interesting and and i mean wanting to look at it and experiencing it because these are almost artifacts of your own healing your own exploration Mm -hmm. Um, your own personal journey but like even though it's an individuated expression because no one can see the world through your eyes no one can live the experiences you've had Mm -hmm. in this life it's only yours but there is something universal about maybe some of the themes that you're working with certain themes or certain like components to emotional states or um existential questioning like i think we all have that on some level i think everyone on some level is seeking a deeper answer than maybe what they've been given Mm. so far whether they know it or not and i think art is a form of seeking um Mm. in a lot of ways like seeking out the truth of who we are and how we can relate to this experience of our life It's very powerful. And I think the geometry in some ways, because it's a universal language is even though it's you're encoding these very personal energies into it, because I Mm. feel 
whatever's moving through your consciousness while you're painting is being imprinted in that work on some mm. level, um, yeah. on some particular level, like people are feeling that energy and resonance and perhaps not for everybody, but maybe for one particular person mm. for each piece yeah. that you make, there is an unlocking that happens in their mind or body or their heart, um, that can be incredibly beneficial. And so for yeah. me, I, I find that to be one of the purposes of art is this can this communicate this deep form of communication. Yeah. Uh, that's, beyond that's language. The aim. <laughs> Say what? Yeah. That's, that's the, the aim. aim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think the only way to achieve that is to become more and more of a channel, become more, yeah. more open to what's happening and letting it move through you through yeah, the work definitely. that you do in your studio. Yeah. In terms of your process for going to the studio, are you very like, I mean, I see like the amount of work you're constantly producing. You're obviously very devoted and disciplined as an artist, which is why you're making such incredible work. I'm curious, like, yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. It's inspiring. Like when I see you, you post a new work, I'm like, man, I got to get in the studio. Yeah. Like, I got to get to work too. It inspires the heck out of me. Um, yeah. to see artists like yourself really just mm. going full on into what they do. Um, but I'm curious, like in terms of your own personal rituals or processes for entering the studio, for getting into the work, like yeah. what does that look like for you on a, on a mm. daily basis or a weekly basis yeah. in terms of your process as an artist? Mm, so I don't think I have a specific uh, ritual or anything like that. Um, but I know that I have, I have some sort of rhythm that I might not be too aware of. I mm. mean, because for me, it feels like this is daily life. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so I, the thing that I noticed is that, um, immediately when I go to my studio, I start working. Mm. I mean, I, I don't, I don't spend too much time, uh, drinking coffee or preparing in a way I just dive right in yeah and then see how how long um or how far I can take it until I I need a break <laughs> yeah. Oh, um yeah, yeah. but so uh, at least I'm, I'm trying to have sort of uh, uh time slot that uh, that I'm working in um mm -hmm. from the start of the day to uh, evening so yeah. uh, yeah. So you treat it like a job, essentially. Like you yeah, show up at the studio every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Showing up for for work, quote unquote. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. I think that's a very healthy way to view it. I like how you said it's very rhythmic too, because mm. depending on what projects you're working on, what stages yeah. you are within them. Yeah. Um, I'd imagine that. Excuse me. Influences sort of how you approach a particular day in the studio. Yeah. But I love what you said about you just get in there and you get right to work. Like yeah. <laughs> that is an amazing thing to be able to do yeah. because I know the feeling sometimes I get in the studio mm. and the mind comes up with lots of excuses or reasons to yeah. be distracted, mm. right? Oh, you need to reply to that email or, oh, mm. why, you need to clean the sink or clean this, or you need yeah. to do that. Um, and it's like almost like res this resistance, like keeping me from starting to work, but like yeah. eventually I overcome it. Some days I jump right in and work, but some days I find myself yeah, yeah. just fumbling around the studio. Yeah. I'm like, what am I doing yeah. right now? <laughs> and, of course. Uh, I also have those days where yeah, I, mean, yeah. I just can't my, get my head straight to, to yeah. the work. Um, one thing, yeah, I, I think one thing I always try and do that helps me personally, like right now, like I've been on a break. I haven't really created much in the past few weeks. I've just been sort of like on, a, I feel like my rhythm of the year is very much like high production and then a, a real deep rest and then produce mm -hmm. and then rest. And so I'm in the like yeah. resting stage between like a new sort of whatever's coming. And, yeah. uh, but when I am in that like productive state, and I'm constantly working, I find it's always helpful to like leave something, even if you feel like you have time to finish it, like a little mm. unfinished. So when you get back, you oh, yeah. pick up right where yeah. you left off and it just gets the juices flowing. It gets the energy yes. moving. And then yeah. you're in that sort of state. And like, then all of a sudden five hours pass and you're like, Oh, that was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Five hours is good. <laughs> I think I could take yeah. a break. Yeah. That's really true. So you don't have a whole new thing to come back to because yeah. that can be, be quite a challenge when mm -hmm. you have been off 
uh, yeah. the whole creative thinking for a while. Exactly. Like you yeah, have but, something that you can pick right back up. Yeah. But I, I definitely, I, I can also see that, that there's something about summertime that the, I work less in the, during the summer. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, what is it? I, yeah. I don't yeah. know yeah. what exactly it is. Um, for sure. For me, it's like my kids are off school or my, I have yeah. two kids now. One's very little, but my five-year-old son, he's off school and yeah. He, he wants to around. do things. Yeah, he wants to hang out. Like, you know, it's like <laughs> I, I spend more time like with family in the summer yeah. because that's where they're more around. But during the school year, it's yeah, it's a little different sort of energy. But I also think something about the summer is because it's so hot and because mm. the energy is so high from, from yeah. a solar perspective. Yeah. That like there it's a good time for for making sure you're resting too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the winter is kind of the opposite because there's not mm -hmm. a lot of energy. Yeah. You, you to want to get in going. that cave, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, I actually feel the same because um, the, the, for the last two weeks I've been uh, in my small home studio um, and I, I just took a few things with me home uh, mm -hmm. for um, my partner. He has a vacation, so I want to spend some time with him as well. Yeah. And yeah. also just, I mean, I have only been in my home studio for one week for, I mean, I, I think it, that was a year ago or something like that, but uh, I'm, I'm halfway through my pregnancy right now. <laughs> oh, so, uh, congratulations. So I'm, I'm also, I mean, trying to get comfortable with having uh, something at home that mm -hmm. I can work on and see how that works. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a whole other, I don't know, it's, it's your studio at home. Yeah. So I have like a little studio at home yeah. as well. And then I have a studio somewhere else that I do yeah. most of my work in, but um, there are times where I like having this here. I, I work a little um, smaller here. It's not a huge space. And, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important to have a, a workspace at home too, but yeah. congratulations. I didn't, I know you <laughs> shared with me if you reached out, yeah. I that to come up, but that's a very powerful and exciting and amazing time to be yeah. in, especially <laughs> I mean, if we think about it from the creative perspective, I mean, all of the idea, all of the things we've been talking about, these yeah. magical creative principles, they are working on you yes, right now definitely. in a way that's so magical and wonderful. And so it'll be interesting to see as you discover new parts of yourself through that process, how that influences your creative process, mm -hmm. how that influences your yeah. perspective on painting yeah. um, and so forth. Because I, I, I can speak from experience as a man with a father and I'm, I do not give birth. I cannot give birth <laughs> to a child, but like I can be a part of it as much as mm -hmm. I humanly possibly can, but there is a big impact. There is a big shift that happens yeah. when that, when that child comes into the world yeah. and it's the most powerful, amazing, magical thing Mm -hmm. I can think of in my life. I'm sure there are other things that are equally magical and powerful for others, but me personally, it's been yeah. like such a revelation and such yeah. a, a huge teaching. I feel like it's yeah. been really about stepping back and, and becoming more and more open and learning mm -hmm. and growing in new, completely new ways yeah. I never expected. So I mean, I can already your work. You know, I can already feel a lot of things is, is happening inside yeah. me. It's, it's, yeah like really crazy, <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> but so in a very good way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so yeah. special and wonderful. And of course I'm sending tons of powerful, loving, healing vibes for a just happy, healthy mommy and baby and everyone out there listening, close your eyes and yeah. send Rebecca all your beautiful vibes um, <laughs> for her and her child. It's just, it's a special thing. And thanks for mm. you know sharing that with me and with us on the podcast. And uh, it'll be interesting yeah. to see how how that affects, you know, the work that you're making, because mm -hmm. I feel like even looking at a lot of your work, there are lots of, sometimes the energy does feel like very birthing energy. Yeah. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. in some of the pieces that you're making from a geometric perspective. Yeah. I think uh, my mom told me that um, since I was in kindergarten, I, I was really fascinated by birth. And sometimes I was bringing this book, uh, how a child is kind of, getting into the world mm -hmm. very grown-up book <laughs> i had it with me in kindergarten and oh i think God. both the children and the the, um, the grown-ups were kind of wow <laughs> interesting but yeah but yeah. i can definitely 
I mean, I, I didn't look for in into that book uh, until recently again. Um, but I can kind of see how some things sneaked in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. In my mind from that early age. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I even think of like some of your work is very like remind is super cosmic. So it's it definitely reminds me of this cosmological space, this sort of uh, sometimes nebulas or like mm. exploding stars or collapsing stars. Like I get that feeling yeah. sometimes from some of the pieces that you do. And I think about like a black hole like mm, the birthing yeah. of stars, <laughs> right. like these exactly. sort of ener yeah. energy, just the way it's yeah. expressed on a, from a, a very macrocosmic scale. I see yes. a lot of that imagery mirrored in some of the work that uh, you've been making in the past. And so mm. I think geometry circling back to math and geometry and creation, it's, yeah. it's so interlinked with our lives in ways that I think we we sometimes fail to remember. And I think what you're doing from a creative perspective is maybe bringing those memories back up in some ways yeah. of this deep cosmological connection of, of all these components of our life. Yeah. One component to your work that I also always love is your color palettes mm -hmm. and the way you play with color. How does that sort of, how do those decisions get made? I would imagine probably a very intuitive mm -hmm. and certain yeah. ways, but are, are there also like other more direct ways in which your color palettes become infused into your work? Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm trying not to imitate a reality in a way. I mean, it, it's definitely something emotion, emotional based. Mm -hmm. um, and also I'm actually also trying to, put um or bring colors together that i i don't think these will work together mm. i mean as as also as a an artistic challenge for myself yeah. um because sometimes i mean when you're when you're creating these gradients it can work with all the colors in the world <laughs> and <laughs> i mean it really helps um putting unexpected uh pairs of colors together mm -hmm. for instance so i'm really i'm always trying to challenge okay this this wouldn't work, but it always end up yeah, find ways of working um, it. Yeah, complementing each other in in a in a weird way. Yeah. Um, I totally understand that. I mean, from like a more practical point of view, as just being an artist who mixes lots of pain and looks at lots of paintings. Like mm. one thing I noticed in your work that it I think helps enhance the color harmonies and connection is like the way that you tone down certain colors, like you take them sort of to graze a little bit or kind of like mm. shift them in certain places or the way you yeah. play with them. Sometimes you play with a little more like earthier colors, yeah. like kind of tans or like burnt oranges and things like this with these like super saturated colors. And I think from like yeah. a color theory perspective, that helps so much create such luminosity, enhances yeah. the feeling of the work too. But mm. I just love the approach that you have to making these gradients when you look up close, just the amount of time that goes into these is, is, yeah. is apparent. Like you can just tell, like there's a real dedication to this process that you've developed. Yeah. I mean, for you, like, are, are you using uh, acrylic or oil painting? I can't recall. Acrylics. Yeah. Acrylics. And then are yeah. you mixing them all beforehand and then applying them? Or are you just mixing as you go? Usually I mix as I go, but I can, yeah. I can actually show I'm, I'm I'm doing these small um, tests. Oh, cool! Um, can you see it? <laughs> yeah. Because what I learned from my experience uh, is that that I mean the jump or the steps is super important. Mm -hmm. How they because in the beginning I could like uh, some of them were there was too much white in it, and then you could really see it in I mean the whole the whole picture. Um, yeah. It kind of stood off or stood. Uh, it was really clear that something it wasn't the right um, mm. um, mixing. Yeah. So I'm making these strips of canvas to to test it also because I mean the the type of paint I use now it it's quite um, it's quite a, as um, when the 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 paint is um, dry and not dry it looks mm. the same. But okay. in the beginning I was using some. Uh, cheaper paint <laughs> mm -hmm. and it, there was really a huge difference uh, yeah, from when it, when it dries yeah so I, I also i always have to check 
how how look how does it look right yeah um, in order to make the gradients right so it's very systematic <laughs> yeah i mean that's part of like i think the the technology the art the programming yeah. right like <laughs> the there pixels. is yeah there is like a yeah. system there is like a logic mm -hmm. to how you're working but then there is an intuitive thing so i think what you're yeah. doing especially with with the with the organic forms, the round, the spheres and these, mm. you know, objects, like, I think you're finding this incredible balance between structure and uh, sort of, I guess, intuitive, like expression or not, I don't want to say randomness, but like organic kind of flowing fluid movement. Like mm. you're, you have this real good balance between control and sort of letting go of control where and when you can. Um, I feel like for me, that's always been a battle is like finding how to let go a little more and yeah. more. And I think that's part of maturing as an artist. Yeah. I feel like when you look at like artists, like later in their life, they're always just like stripping away everything and mm. just they're finding that total freedom. But I think that's the yeah. journey of an artist too, is finding our own yeah. way to that place. And over Definitely. time we have to let go of certain mm. ways we do things Yeah. Um, or trusting our hand or trusting our intuition and instead of yeah. controlling the outcome. I think that's something I want to continue to work on more and more because when you have those moments of freedom, it's what a feeling that is. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, when, it, when that flows out of yeah. you like that, you're like, where did that come from? Yeah. And so cultivating that's important, but also being aware of your materials. I think there's yeah. a balance, like in order to mm -hmm. be very skillful with the way that you work, you have to understand the materials and what they can do, yeah. what they can't do. So yeah. then you can push them. Um, mm. more and more. Um, so that's really interesting, like just do, doing those gradients and sw and those swatches and stuff. But it sounds like yeah. I like the what you're talking about with color and that like you want to challenge yourself and try to get yeah. colors that don't maybe make a lot of sense together mm -hmm. or they have like maybe a very like expected or cliche sort of um, feeling to them like yeah. we've seen them before, but then changing yeah. the way we experience them. Yeah by the way you implement them into your work. I can definitely see that a lot, especially like when you look at your website, everybody, the link will be in the show notes. Definitely look through like the history of your work. Like, mm -hmm. I think you have a great archive of how yeah. your works evolved. Like you can see your explorations in color mm -hmm. over time. Um, and you're always keeping it interesting, which I find to be really inspiring. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could definitely see when I look through my, my early paintings, uh, I was willing you... Uh, very much using the, the clear color I mean mm -hmm. not mixing it up it up uh, just with the with white to make it lighter and black to uh, make it darker and yeah. and now I it's rarely that I use a complete um, uh, color uh, without mixing some yeah sometimes also I mean uh, the opposite color <laughs> of it just to see what happens yeah I mean, toning it down mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like I'm, I've been exploring that too. Like, I think the beauty of using complementary colors to kind of yeah. shift the, yeah. the feeling to make it more earthy or toning yes. them down a little more in relation to the saturated colors mm. that come through, it just makes them even more powerful. Yeah. So like, you got to learn how mm. to play with depth and the sort of way you're mixing colors so that you can mm. enhance the feeling that comes from them. But yeah. it definitely creates a different kind of mood to them. And yes, I think yeah. for me, a, a different level of sophistication because yeah. you're not going straight from the tube, but you're really mm -hmm. like the mixing of the paint is another form of exploration and mm -hmm. discovery. Um, yeah. and I think the possibilities in mixing paint are endless. Like there's just infinite yeah. ways in which you can play with paint in my mind, especially yeah. when you get nerdy about pigments, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. you're really nerdy about which yeah. pigments you're using and how you're using them possibilities yeah. are just so magnificent and so I think that's been a really cool way of like seeing your evolution too the the sophistication mm. of how you're using color just keeps getting better and better and better so it's just so yeah. exciting to watch um mm. to watch you keep doing what you're doing and yeah. um I'm happy you know, to hear that <laughs> say what I'm so happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'm I'm a nerd about art. Like I look yeah. deeply, I see. I yeah. I think when you make it, you know what you you can look a little more clearly because you're mm. in that world and you're in that space. Yeah. Um, but you can just tell, like I I'm, you know, sadly, I like a lot of guests I've had on the podcast, like I haven't been able to see a lot of their work in person mm. just because of where I live. Never gotten to yeah. see one of your pieces in person, but like 
I know enough that I can look on a screen and tell like, wow, it's just powerful. And I can imagine I, hopefully one day soon in the future, I'll be able to come across one of your original yeah. pieces in person to feel them in a totally different yeah. way. Because I think the screen is, is the next best thing, but the best thing is to feel yeah. their presence. Cause Definitely. I think these, I feel that original art back to this, our discussion earlier about like analog, mm. like how you went analog, like something about that, something that's handmade mm. has just a different aura to it, a different yeah. feeling, a different resonance to it, as opposed to something that was just printed from a computer. Um, yeah. And Very so much. the value of art is in experiencing these, these objects of intimacy mm. um, that another person really spent time with and dedicated their um, selves to creating. It's just, there's nothing that replaces it in this mm -hmm. digital age. We need more and more of that. And so yes. um, I think it's such an amazing relationship that your work can feel technological, can feel like futuristic, can feel mm -hmm. like digital in some ways, but it is anything but that. And I think that mm -hmm. is the big surprise and beauty of it all. Yeah. Um, Cause I think that's something as a culture we need to get back to is yeah, analog true. life a little bit yeah. to balance our digital reality because no matter what yeah. we do, it's coming. It's here. It's, it's it is crazier. It is, <laughs> and it's a challenge. Yes, <laughs> to live with. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, in regards to um, how you kind of, um, I mean, transform or how you view art, it's definitely a challenge for me to um, to to present my sculptural works. Mm -hmm. Because they they need even more the 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 reality or the analog yeah. way of of experiencing it. Yeah, but um, yeah. you need to be in the space with them and yeah. build that relationship with your body. Yeah, um, I don't know if a virtual reality would be the, <laughs> the way to go, but <laughs> it's something to maybe explore. But I just think yeah. that uh, the more we get into this AI age and technological mm. digital age, which yeah. is going to happen, we can't. I don't think we're going to stop this momentum of where it's going. It's no. going where it's going. But I think what we can do through art, through intentional curation of experiences, like get back to the ground, get back mm. to space, get back to the body, get back to yeah. the feeling of being alive in its yeah. most immediate sense. Yeah. Um, Cause that's going to help balance out this digital age. Cause the one thing I don't want to see happen for my kids. And I would imagine you don't want, for mm. yours is, is them to live inside a box looking at screens yeah. all the time. Like Wall-E. Yeah. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. It freaked me out. A, Which movie? Dis, it's called Wall-E. It's a Disney Pixar Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Yeah. Oh, it freaked yeah. me out. I'm like, is this where yeah. we're going? Like, because it, yeah. it did have a feeling of like a warning of some kind. Yes. But, um, but I think the onus is on us to be more mm -hmm. intentional about Definitely. embracing a life that can balance out the digital experience. Um, yeah. So going to see art, going to museums, walking in nature, making yeah. things with your hands, quilting, yeah. sewing, painting, mm -hmm. sculpting, building with objects in the woods, like whatever, yeah. woodworking, whatever. But like, I think getting back to this tactility of mm -hmm. the human experience is really, it's going to prove to be more and more and more important as we move yeah. forward in time. Yeah. I, I, I agree so much. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm so. really, I mean, I'm really thinking much about definitely my um, relationship to my phone mm -hmm. and what a time stealer that thing is. Yeah. Um. So I'm really trying to, to make some conscious choices, but I think it's really hard because they 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 made it like they they did uh, with the algorithms and yeah, stuff like that. It's so hard. I mean, we're yeah. fighting against uh, a team of the most intelligent computer mm. programmers and psychologists, yes. like who know how, yeah. and neuro and neurologists or um, neuroscientists, you mm. know, people who know how the the mind works and how it yeah. relates to our psychology, and so yeah. they're they're hijacking us in a lot of ways. We've, we've been hijacked. We have to recognize mm -hmm. that. Like every single one, if you have a smartphone and social media, like you've mm -hmm. been hijacked. It's just, mm -hmm. we have been, but yeah. does it mean we can't fight back to, to, to kind of find a better balance? And no. I think with any new 
thing, like this whole social media experiment and digital age we're in, it's so new that we're still trying to figure out what it is and how to yeah. navigate in a healthy way. And I think as we move into the future, more and more people are becoming aware of, mm. of the of the sort of chains that come with these technologies. And so we have to be more intentional about how we break them or take uh, breaks from them. Yeah. Um, because it's something I think about as a parent too, because yeah. my, my kids are coming up in this age. It's going to be a part of life. Yeah. I can't, I can't take it fully away from them. No. I have to find ways to develop a healthy relationship yeah. with it. And the, the best place to start is myself. I yeah. do that myself. And first. I'm, yeah. Help them. And, and, and learning or teaching them about critical thinking and mm -hmm. being conscious of your own choices. But I mean, that's definitely a task. <laughs> yes. It's part of it. <laughs> the whole thing is what we got to yeah. do. Yeah. But, um, it's exciting to, to see artists like yourself working in the way you're working. And um, Rebecca, I'm just so grateful to you for spending time with me on the podcast and Thank sharing you. so much about your work. It's incredible. And I'm just so excited for your journey, not only as an artist, but as a mother, like it's mm -hmm. just going to be so special um, for you in so many levels. And um, I'm excited to continue to connect with you and be inspired by what comes out of your studio. So everybody out there, please check the show notes. There's going to be links to our Instagram website, any other links you want me to add on there. We can talk later mm -hmm. when the episode releases, we can add that to the show notes, but um, just thank you so much again for joining me from mm. all the way from Denmark on this uh, beautiful summer day. And thank you so much for having me, Martin. Yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll talk really soon, okay? Yes. <laughs> all right. Peace. Bye. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode of Concerning the Spiritual and Art. If you like what we're doing here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay in touch and in tune with all the amazing offerings that we're going to be uh, bringing to this channel. Um, thanks again for all your support. Super grateful and uh, yeah, excited to uh, bring more content your way. Peace, y'all.